Weather radar has changed a lot over the last couple of years, and it's probably the most powerful tool when it comes to tracking weather and saving lives. Here's a look at the science behind how it works. It's one of the most powerful tools in tracking rain, thunderstorms, and tornadoes. Radio detection and ranging, or radar, can be life-saving when it comes to severe weather, and the meteorologists at the National Weather Service in Peachtree City monitor it daily. It's, it's the bread and butter of what we do. Is it raining in such and such location? Is that hail? Is that debris? Is that a tornado? Uh, all of those things come from radar. Most radars are housed inside these protective domes. Well, it looks like a giant soccer ball on the outside. Inside, you'll find a transmitter and receiver. Electromagnetic waves are the science behind how it works. We use it to detect objects in the atmosphere. It sends out a beam of microwave energy. Objects in the atmosphere return that energy back to it, and so it can determine the, the density of the objects. The images that the waves detect appear on screen. Based on the size and shape, the meteorologist can tell whether it's precipitation or biological objects like this flock of seagulls detected over Lake Superior. Computers calculate and analyze the strength of the return, time it takes to travel to and from the object, and shifts in movement in a matter of seconds. It also uses less energy than you might think. The radar sends out 450,000 watts of energy. A typical microwave is about 1,000 watts. Uh, the radar is actually only sending out energy about seven seconds in one hour, and it's listening 59 minutes and 53 seconds of that total hour. So it's not actually transmitting a lot of energy over the course of an hour. It's doing a lot of listening. Radar technology has been advancing faster in recent years, giving meteorologists a greater advantage when it comes to tracking storms and saving lives. Uh, with the dual polarization, uh, that was a revolutionary change technologically for us. That's what's enabling us to do tornado debris signatures, look at classifying objects as biological or, or non-biological, and then the super resolution has come along since then. I'm a good friend, there's Keith Stillman, meteorologist in charge, and all the meteorologists at the National Weather Service, thank you for all that you do, helping to save our lives, folks. They are the ones who issue the watches and the warnings that we have. Uh, none here, not right now. And you're looking at our radar, and it doesn't show much